Hey guys, so let's go ahead and wrap up our ideas for this week. So we have made it to the fourth of the different ways we're going to talk about analyzing sets of data this week. To recap, on Monday we talked about finding the mean, add all the numbers up, divide by how many numbers there are to get the mean or the average. Uh, Tuesday was median. Median sounds like middle. Order the numbers from least to greatest then find the number in the middle. And remember, if there are two in the middle, add those two numbers up and then divide by two. Then yesterday we talked about mode. Mode was what we talked about was probably the easier one to do of the three, one of the easiest probably of the one we're going to talk about. And that mode is just what number shows up the most. And there can be more than one mode, so keep that in mind. You don't average it. If you find two numbers that show up the most, write them both down. If you find four numbers that show up the most, write them both down. Doesn't matter what they are. Make sure you write them down. So today we're going to talk about the last one. Uh, this is going to be pretty short, sweet, and to the point here. Uh, the last one is going to be range. So we already talked about range a little uh, yesterday because a few of the dot plots we looked at yesterday had range and why they wanted to know the range in the questions. They also called the range sp uh, the spread. So keep in mind that if you hear the word spread, you're also most likely talking about range. So let's just get into how to do the range here. So we have a couple of range sheets on the AMI packets that were passed out. And let's just kind of talk about them. So the first one that I want to talk about with you guys is this sheet that simply says at the top range. And then right below that, they give you a really great example of how to find the range. It says on the example, find the range for the given data. And then the data or the number list they give you shows 24, 31, 12, 38, 13, 15, 46, and 62. And then they just go ahead and say it to you guys. They tell you exactly how to find range. Like we said yesterday, range equals the maximum value minus the minimum value. And when they're saying that, guys, what they're really talking about, remember what we said, maximum is the biggest number in the list. Minimum is the smallest number in the list. So they're just saying, take the maximum number, which in this case looks like it was 62. And then take the minimum number, the smallest number, in this case it was 12, and subtract them. 62 minus 12 gives me a range of 50. So the answer to that example, what's the range, is 50. The, in other words, the spread of that data, how far apart the numbers are, if you take the biggest and the smallest number, it'll tell you that how far apart they are, how spread out they are, is 50. So just to kind of talk about range before we get into how to do it, just kind of the point of it, um, a lot of times range will tell you the consistency of the data that you're getting. So typically you want consistent data in a lot of situations. Not, not all the time, but a lot of times in statistics you want consistency. And kind of like great example, test scores. It'd be nice if we all consistently got a high test score. Um, it'd be nice if all the scores were not only nice high scores, but they were all pretty close together because it's showing us that it seems like whatever was being explained, people were all seeming to understand it on a pretty even level. Like they, people seem to really get it. Um, now, range can also be a good thing. If we don't do so well on a test, because if I give you all a test and pretty much everybody makes a low score is saying, okay, it seems like something's on me as the teacher. I've clearly missed the point on an explanation here or several apparently that have caused us to struggle on this test. And I need to go back and look at myself and see what can I do to better teach this information? Because clearly those test scores are all really close together and they're all low. So they're pretty consistently low because they're not very spread out. So 
probably on me as the teacher to go back and re-examine what I've been teaching and maybe go back and do other things to help us better understand material and try again. Um, but that's just a few examples. And we'll get to that of uh, one similar to that later. But honestly, guys, range is not too complicated. So we're really just going to do a few examples here because once again, guys, it's really just like the meme. Once you do it, there's no extra thought about it. There's no, again, there's no, oh, wait, here's more moment. A um, little different than with median and mode. There's a bit of a wait, here's more moment with median and mode. Because with median, you have to think about what to do when there's two numbers. And when there's mode, you also have to think about, oh, wait, what do I do if there's two numbers? But with range, there's really not anything extra about it. Uh, you just find the biggest number, you find the smallest number, and you subtract them. And again, it'll tell you how spread out your data is. It'll tell you, are these numbers consistently staying close together, or are they being, are they ending up in total being pretty spread apart? So we're just going to stick to a few examples, and we're just going to do a few on the side that says finding range. Because quite frankly, guys, the other side that we're doing with range, there's nothing new about it, nothing different. It's just rinse and repeat and practice a little bit more. So on the finding range, I want to talk about three examples here. So the first example I want to look like I want to look at on the side that says finding range. Again, that's the one that has the example at the top in the box that shows you how to do range is number one. So on number one, here's my list of data. I wrote it all out and let's just give it a shot. So it looks like on my data, I have 36, 17, 22, 43, 11, 56, 17, and 71. So what I want to do here, guys, is I want to look at my data and say, okay, if I look through here, first off, let's find the maximum which one appears to be the biggest number on the list. And if I do that, it looks to me like 71 is the biggest number. And if I look through here, yeah, I, I don't see a number bigger than 71. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that my maximum, I, I'm just going to call maximum max. So max will stand for maximum. I'm going to say my maximum is 71. So I found my first step. There's my max, my biggest number. It's 71. Now I'm going to look back through here and say, okay, where is the smallest number in this list? In other words, where's the minimum? Well, I see an 11 right here. Let's see. If, if I look through this list, I don't see anything smaller than 11. So therefore, my minimum, which I will call minimum min for short, which you will, you will often see max the abbreviation for maximum and min to be the abbreviation for minimum. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that my minimum is 11. So minimum is 11. Okay. Now I have everything I need. We're not going to go into too much detail here because honestly, it doesn't need much. Now that I'm a minimum and a maximum, I'm just going to take the maximum number of 71 and I'm going to subtract the minimum number, which was 11. And if I do 71 minus 11, I end up getting a range of 60. So my range on number one should be 60. And that's it. There's your range. Simple as that. Um, really, the only thing that I think on this, guys, that might be confusing at a moment is, oh, well, what if there's two maximums that are the same number? Like, what if I had two 71s? Or what if I had two 11s? Well, you only need one. You don't use both of them. Just use one of the 71s and one of the 11s, if that showed up. So if you have two maximums that are the same number, just use one of them. Same with minimum. So no... No curveballs on this, guys. Just find the biggest number and the smallest number. So the next one I want to look at is number six. 
if I take a look at number six, I have my list right here. Looks like I have a 78, 8, 34. Looks like I have a 61, 55, and a 29, it looks like. So there's my list. So when I, again, the two things I need, minimum, maximum. So I'm going to find the maximum first. Remember, we call it max. If I look through this list, it appears that the biggest number I have on this entire list right here is a 78. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, there's nothing bigger than 78. That must be my maximum. So I'm going to call the maximum 78. And then I'm going to look for the minimum. Well, minimums, again, pretty obvious. Look at this list. There's only one single digit number here, and it's eight. There's no other single digit numbers. So clearly, eight has to be the minimum in this problem. So I have a minimum of eight. And again, if I want the range, like we just talked about, maximum minus the minimum. So I'm going to take my maximum of 78 and I'm going to subtract the minimum of 8 from it. And if I do 78 minus 8, the range should be 70. Again, guys, no rocket science on this. Find the biggest number, find the smallest number, subtract them. Okay, so I want to look at one more, guys. Let's look at one of the word problems on here. And I chose this one, guys, because this is a great one as far as like kind of applying it to kind of like the theme we've been looking at. Um, and actually, we'll talk a little bit about number seven here in a minute. Um, but I want to look at eight. So eight says the number of people who visited a winter carnival during the first seven hours of a day are the following. 79, 83, 50, 69, 92, 77, 88. So what they're giving you guys here is there are what appear to be seven numbers in the list. Well, that makes sense because what they're doing is every hour they're figuring out how many people are at this winter carnival. So they're saying in the first hour, there's 79 people. Second hour, there are 83 people. The third hour, it dropped off. There's only 50 people. And then 69, 92, 77, 88. So it looks like it fluctuates for the most part. If we were to look through the data, we could analyze it and say, okay, it starts out pretty high, and then it drops down to 50. Then it goes back up all the way to 92, drops back down. It kind of fluctuates. It keeps going up and then back down, and it fluctuates back up. So there's not really an obvious, like, perfect time or like the ideal time for people to be there because there's a few peaks in the amount of people that you see like 83 92 88 etc so let's just go ahead and find the range of this so if i were to do that i'm looking through my list here and it looks like i have a maximum of 92 so i'm going to put max is equal to 92 so the most people they ever had at that event was 92 so so far there are 92 for a maximum here again we are down here on number eight okay now i just want the minimum well we talked about it a little bit already the minimum appears to be 50 so i'll say the minimum is 50 And again, we want the range. So if I want range, I got maximum minus minimum. So I'm going to take that maximum of 92 and I'm going to subtract that minimum of 50. And if I do that, I should get a range of 42. So my range here is 42. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, guys, and actually do one more example here because I want to talk about something that will kind of get to the point of range. So I'm going to look at number seven again real quick. Um, like I say, there's none of these are just like super more of a stretch to figure out than another. So I'm not really taking any of the quote hard ones out. 
they're all pretty much the same difficulty here, guys, other than some may being maybe having more spread out numbers than others. Um, but actually, number seven is one of the easier ones on here. It says eight baskets of apples weigh in pounds 70, 68, 73, 78, 73, 68, 75, 76. And they want you to find the range. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that list down. 70, 68, 73, 78, 73 again, 68, 75, and last but not least, 76. And just to check myself here, guys, I see one, sorry about that. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. And if I check my list, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So I have them all. So now I just need to find my range by doing maximum and minimum. So I look like, or if I look at this list, guys, if I'm searching for the maximum, it appears that the maximum is 76. Look over that real quick. Yeah, the only I don't see any number bigger than 76, so therefore that has to be the maximum. And then, guys, if I look for my minimum, my minimum on this list, it looks like I have two that are tied for the minimum. I have two 68s on this list. So with those two 68s, they are both the minimum. But again, like I said, you only need to use it one time. So I'm just going to write one of those 68s down for the minimum. And then I'm going to finish off with the range. My range will be 76 minus 68, which should give me a final answer of 8. So there's my range on number 7. So on number 7, the answer should be 8. So here's the point of this. Let's just take a peek at these two lists on number seven and number eight. Because, guys, while these two questions did not talk about test scores, they were talking about, if I remember correctly, yeah, they were talking about baskets of apples and what they weigh and people in a park, or sorry, visiting a carnival. While those weren't talking about test scores, if you look at these numbers, we could relate them to test scores. I mean, these are understandable scores to potentially get on tests. So I know I keep coming back to test scores, but it's just a really easy example to explain. And we'll come up with more too. I don't want this to strictly be a, oh, want a good test score here. No, they're just good examples to use to kind of give us a good relatable idea to look at. So let's just say I gave a test. And the first time, here's my test scores. These are just the numbers from number eight. Well, if I wanted to talk about, am I reliably teaching this material? If I were to look at the test scores and base it on the range, I would have to say no. Because sure, it's great to see some people get an 83 and a 92 and an 88. Those are nice scores. But at the same time, I don't want to see people getting 50s on this test either. And if I look through here, that's a 69 on the test. I don't want people getting a D on it either. So it just doesn't seem like I can have set people up on this test to consistently do well. Some people did really well. Some people didn't. So clearly we've fallen short somewhere where we need to help the people that didn't quite get as well as they probably would have liked in a better situation to succeed. So. Based on this, I would say probably wasn't a very successful test for us. Either we weren't totally prepared or I didn't fully prepare for us for the test. Something clearly didn't fell short here. So let's look at the other scenario. Eight was my range. Well, if I initially look at these scores, it's kind of an open interpretation here because I looked at these scores I don't see any A's on it. It looks like, like we said, the highest score was a 76. Highest score was a C, which isn't great. But in the other way, there's not terrible either. It's passing. Sure, we'd probably like to do a little bit better. But at the same time, you only see one score on this whole list, or actually two on the list, that are just barely a D. 
68, 68. And if we're if we're basing success on consistency for this test, I would say if you wanted to base it on how consistent the scores were, it was a fairly successful test in that most of us passed the test, and maybe it was a hard test, and maybe I mean there's gonna be some tests that are just harder to pass than others. Maybe it was just one of those tests, but Clearly, we did a pretty good job of all of us being ready and, and for the most part, passing it. So as far as reliability, as, as far as consistency of test scores, I would say that it was we were pretty even. We were spread out or we weren't very spread out. Everybody seemed to understand it a pretty equal amount simply because nobody did clearly better than everyone else and no one did clearly worse than everybody else. So it was seemed to be a more level amount of success on here. But again, that's just basing it on consistency. Ideally, we'd probably like to see more or higher scores on it, but at least we were consistent. So guys, that's really all there is to range. Um, there shouldn't really be anything else about it that would throw us off as far as understanding how to do it. Uh, that's really about all I have for today's lesson here. Um, if we end up having a question about a past assignment we've looked at that we need to go over, like dot plots, frequency tables, histograms, we'll talk about that in a later video. Um, we've pretty much covered what I want to talk about so far. So, again, just to recap range, all it is is take the maximum, which is the biggest number, and subtract the minimum from it, which is the smallest number. Biggest number minus smallest number gives you your range. And it's just one number every time. Your range is only one number. The only number, or this are the only way to analyze data this week that we've talked about that gives you more than one answer is mode. Mean gives you one answer, median gives you one answer, range gives you one answer. Sometimes, and a lot of times, mode only has one answer, but it doesn't always have one answer. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the material we'll be looking at this week, guys. Uh, so we're going to have a quiz is tomorrow, uh, and I'm going to have it ready to go after our Zoom meeting tomorrow. So please, if you have any questions that you need to talk about that we've covered this week on mean, median, mode, and range. Please make sure to bring those questions to the meeting and we'll clarify that. Or if you just need a question answered today, please email me or message me and I will happily help you out to better understand that material. So make sure to finish the work that we have in our packets on mode. And please again, send me any, or sorry, on, I'm sorry, on range. Oh, it was yesterday. Sorry. Please finish the work that we have on our packets on range. You should have already finished mode on yesterday's assignment. So make sure you get everything for range completed today. Um, again, I uploaded the documents. I put them on slide, Google Slides. You should be able to type on the assignments now and i apologize guys for for a bit bit of a few hiccups early on here with our assignments you should be able now to type in the documents or sorry the slides that i sent you and you should be able to edit them put your answers in and submit them and you should be able to get your name on it as well if you do have any issues guys typing on the on the slides that i send you to do your assignments on Please let me know and I'll look into that. But I think we've got all the kinks worked out at this point. Um, and thank you guys for your patience on that and for working hard. Um, hopefully I've been able to answer any questions we've had so far. Hopefully I have my um, extra information I've been sending y'all has been helpful whenever y'all have had questions. Uh, keep them coming, guys. Y'all are doing a great job. Proud of you guys for working hard and asking good questions along the way. And uh, hopefully we'll be ready to go for this quiz tomorrow. I think this will be an easy quiz. If, if, if you've been understanding everything we've been doing this week on mean, medium, mode, and range, you should be good to go. So be prepared for a quiz on quizzes on Friday. 
Uh, once again, guys, good luck. Uh, make sure you get all the range work turned in and uploaded to Google Classroom or send me uh, pictures if you aren't able to get onto the classroom page so I can get those put in. So thank you guys for your time and have a good rest of your day.